This video takes a look at the Dell 2415H's OSD on-screen display menu system. Um, although this is a, a video showing the OSD, I just thought since I'm recording this I might as well show you how beautifully thin the bezels are on this display. And also the fact that it does indeed have a glossy screen. In the review there is uh, further analysis on the gloss of the screen itself. It's uh, it's not as bad as the glass fronted models. It's definitely still glossy and you have to be careful with your room lighting but um, you can see in this mixed image here there's not overwhelming amount of reflection really. The OSD is controlled by these touch sensitive buttons here. First, if you press any of these, it brings up a little quick menu here. The first button allows you to control the preset that the monitor is in, and it switches between presets quite quickly. If you select uh, the custom colour preset, then there's a further option that's only available here, and that allows you to change the red, green and blue colour channels. The next option along is the volume for the integrated speakers or for the headphone jack if you're using it. And next is the main menu. And this is quite familiar if you're used to Dell's modern monitors. It's got this little energy use bar at the top here which basically just goes up and down depending on the level of brightness that you're using. And I'll demonstrate that here. So if I increase the brightness, the energy use goes up. Decrease it, it goes down. It's um, fairly useful if you're using presets which adjust the brightness and you're not aware of how much it's actually changing the brightness by. It's also useful for dynamic contrast mode of the monitor because you can't actually see what brightness level the monitor is using except for using your eyes. So the energy use um, bar there is quite useful. You can select the input source, and there are only two sources on the monitor. There's VGA, which is the analog connection, and HDMI with MHL capability, which is the digital connection. There's just one of each there. There's a colour menu, which allows you to select input colour format. Um, I believe the monitor actually does that automatically, depending on what you select in the graphics uh, the graphics driver, but you, you shouldn't. So you shouldn't really have to worry about that. You can again change the preset mode of the monitor, just like you could in the quick menu before. Or you can reset the colour settings. Next up, there's display, and that allows you to select an aspect ratio if you're. If you want to be using a slightly different aspect ratio, perhaps if you're using a lower resolution than the monitor's native full HD, and you can see it does actually give you black borders there, and it uh, correctly scales to that aspect ratio. Although obviously in the full HD resolution, everything looks squished and weird. There's a sharpness control here, which, as usual for Dell, gives you increments of 10 between 0 and 100. And there are a number of settings greyed out here. Um, that's because they're only applicable to the VGA connection. All of this is set automatically on digital connections. There's a response time setting. There are just two settings here, normal and fast. And those are explored in the review. And there's an option here to reset display settings, which will only reset the settings on this particular menu, I believe. I'm not going to try, just in case. Some simple audio settings there. 
So you can select an audio source there, you can either have MHL on the HDMI input or you can select PC audio which I believe uses the 3.5mm input jack of the monitor. Then again you can reset audio settings. So you see on, on all of these um, menus, if you, if you mess something up on one particular menu, you don't have to do a factory reset of all of the settings, you can just reset the uh, settings on that particular menu which is quite useful. There's an energy menu which again doesn't really have an awful lot of uh, functionality here. You can simply ask that the power button is on when the monitor's on. Little power button there, uh, power light there. Or you can have it off when the monitor's on. If you, for whatever reason, find it a bit distracting or you just don't like it. And again, reset energy settings, although I'm guessing it's probably just as easy to uh, change that one individual setting there rather than resetting, but never mind. Some menu settings here. You can change the, the language of the OSD, you can change the level of transparency, you can change how how long before um, the menu disappears after um, a lack of button presses. I should probably have increased that before I started this video, but never mind, I didn't. So you can set that between um, 5 seconds and 60 seconds. And you can lock the OSD if you don't want to be accidentally using it or you don't want another family member, perhaps a a kid of yours to be uh, messing around with your settings and again you can reset just the menu settings so just these to the defaults next up there's a personalized menu and this allows you to change the shortcut key one and two which are the the first two buttons on the quick menu so if you recall the first one was preset modes, um, the second was volume, but you can change those so they adjust brightness and contrast, um, auto adjust which is a VGA setting, you can select an input source, change the aspect ratio, control volume. So perhaps one thing I'd find quite useful is because I don't use the integrated speakers on the monitor, um, although I do cycle through the presets though, so perhaps I'd select brightness and contrast for the second shortcut key and again there's a, a reset personalization where you can just reset these settings to default so now if I exit the menu and open up the little quick menu you can see there's a little sun icon there um, and that means it's given me shortcut key 2 that allows me to adjust the contrast and the brightness And finally, there is Others, the last bit of the menu here. You can enable or disable DDC slash uh, CI, which is basically just the plug and play functionality of the monitor. So most users will just want to leave that enabled, which is the default setting. There's an LCD conditioning cycle. Um, well, that's pretty much the last thing, actually. I'll, I might as well just show you that. Um, there's reset other settings or factory reset so you can reset all of the settings on all of the menus. So this LCD conditioning cycle, I'll just show you that quickly. It's something that's built into um, I think all of Dell's modern monitors. And as it says here, this feature will help reduce minor cases of image retention. I haven't actually noticed any image retention on this monitor. Um, I've been, I've left it showing static content for a few hours actually at a time and usually on a monitor if it's going to cause image retention that will cause image retention but um, you know I haven't haven't tested specific patterns sometimes it's certain patterns which can cause image retention but I don't think it's something you really have to worry about on this monitor but you know for a bit of peace of mind it, you can make the monitor cycle through various uh, colors to try and ease off the image retention and in pretty much all cases 
you know, you leave this running for a few uh, hours or perhaps overnight, depending on the severity of the image retention, it'll get rid of it. Ah, lovely, lovely uh, mirror, mirror like on the black there, very nice. So, yes, yeah, so it just cycles through various uh, colours until you press one of the buttons on the OSD to cancel it. So there you are, that's the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Dell S2415H.